Hey guys, and I know that you're looking at the title and you're like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Didn't we have another week? I decided to go ahead and move this up. It's all part of my plan and my scheduling on the on the channel, so I apologize, but we got enough. We got plenty of comments. I got a ton of crap to talk about. I mean, this video might be so long, we might have to cut it into two parts. If need be, I can go ahead and cut it into two parts, and we can have the other part go up tomorrow with me using Pendulum Chaos Dragon. So you'll find out, you know, if it'll say part one, or if it doesn't, then I guess I squeeze it into one video. I can't see into the future, okay? But we got a ton of comments. Like I said, comment any card to talk about, and you guys pretty much threw everything at me. So I'm going to go over pretty much all your comments. I'm going to go ahead and, you know, state your name. I will go ahead and put a link in the description for every person I talk about. You can go ahead and go to their channel. I don't care if you have a channel or not. You comment it, you get the shout out. It's just how it's just how it works, right? So, like I said, we got plenty of comments. Thank you guys for commenting and take the time to, you know, participate in this. It really helps me and you know, helps me see if I forgot anything when it comes to my balance prediction, any debates, any arguments that we can go ahead and stir up. So uh this is kinda like a like a kinda like a little spoiler to my balance prediction because, you know, I will go ahead and kinda hint on what I think in my opinion and we'll go off like that. So the reason why I push this up a week is because um, you guys might know or may not know is that um, Minecraft uh, Dragon Block C, is, the finale, is actually going up today. And I am planning a new series that will be replacing it at the 1 o'clock slot. Um, but, you know, I need to hype it up a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and give it, like, I'd say about one or two weeks before I start the series. So I need to go ahead and, you know get this out of the way and then this of course was going to be hyped up for like a week and then I was going to do a whole week of just you know hyping up the new series but then the whole problem came up of me trying to promote my next great yu tuber thing so that came up and then just, just I'm just ton just ton of other things to do and just really busy with the channel so uh, I apologize if you guys didn't get your comments in. Uh, if you guys have anything that you want to state, you go ahead and, and comment in the comment section below, and I will reply if I haven't mentioned it or brought it up already. Like I said, I don't know how long this video is. I'm a long-winded talker, and I would like to go into a lot of detail, so I will go ahead and do that. And if it needs to be part two, we will go ahead and do a part two. It's as simple as that. So, we're going to start it off. So, first comment is by Omega Chaos. And he stated, I definitely want these cards to be talked about. All right. First one, Gear 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 to 1. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Gear 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 is definitely the card that makes that deck that deck. Just being able to just activate that card during your opponent's end phase, summon the two, they go up a level to their both four, and then just be able to synchro summon or exceed into a Gear Gun X next turn is definitely good. Like, Summoning from the deck is definitely frowned upon when it comes to you. I mean, for goodness sake, we got Summoner Monk at 2, and just summoning from the deck is just really, really, really powerful. Um, there's other cards that, you know, we look at for set precedence of this, of course. You know, we have uh, Abyss Fear, and uh, we have Sanctum. And, of course, then we have Gyrgyz, that's pretty much the trinity right there, and, you know, you kind of want to go set presence on all, and hit all three of them, but, you know, you really can't put them in the same boat. Definitely Gyrgyz Gear is just more powerful uh, out of the three, just because you can summon two monsters. I mean, you could argue Sanctum because you can activate it and you can summon um, more Moral Talk and Moral Talk and pop a card, but this can summon two monsters. Like, if you could activate Abyss Sphere and summon two monsters, oh my god, you know, if you could activate Sanctum and summon two artifacts, wow, so just being able to summon two of your Gear Gear monsters, and they also go up a level, so of course they're four, so next turn you can go ahead and summon your tuners that you got in your hand, your card your Katakuri tuners being able to synchro something and go off OTK your opponent, or just simply just go into a Gear Gun X and just plus from just, you know, searching. It's just a really powerful card. It's what makes the deck the deck. You know, people are saying, like, oh, hit armor, hit accelerator. No, it's Gear Gear Gear. Definitely Gear Gear Gear. I predicted that this card was going to go down to one last time, and it didn't. So, crossing my fingers, hopefully, Gear 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 to one, Konami. I don't know. Next card to talk about. Artifact Sanctum. Oh yeah, I think. Oh, I, all right. Let me let me say. I I personally, I personally would like Artifact Sanctum to go down to one. Do I think Konami is gonna put the card down to one? No, no. They're still promoting that artifact. They want to make that artifact moolah. And definitely over these past 
few ban lists, because I've definitely, over the past few ban lists, I've been testing the waters and seeing what Konami does and what it doesn't do, you know, since it's separated from the OCG with our TCG Konami. And what I've definitely realized is, when it comes to money, they will push the envelope. And despite Sanctum being this really, really broke, well, I wouldn't say broke, I'd, I'd say, I wouldn't say broke. It's really good. It's really, it's really, really great. It's just a, woo, that's a good card. <laughs> like, mmm. I wouldn't say broke because, you know, it's not format shaking, you know, it's not like every deck has artifact sanctum in the deck, you know. It's only for, of course, artifacts, but uh, they definitely wanted to promote this deck, they want to make money off of this deck, so definitely they're just going to continue just push this deck. Like, uh, I know definitely the next pack, the artifacts are getting some more support, and then probably the pack after that, so we still got a little while before, you know, we kind of put the artifacts to sleep, Konami's made all their money, and they're kind of, they're ready to get rid of it. No, this is just the beginning of artifacts. This is one of the key cards in of artifacts, arguably the best card, so they're not going to hit it. They're not going to hit it, despite how good it is and how it should be at one, it's not going to get hit. So, look forward to dealing with some artifacts next format, guys, with Artifact Sanctum at 3. Next card to talk about, Madoche Hoot Cake to 1. Uh, Omega Chaos believes that it is Hoot Cake that is the problem and not Angeli. And, uh, you know, I definitely have to go, I have to go back and forth, you know. Uh, there's a it's, the thing is that generally in a deck, uh, you can at least pick out one to two cards where you can point fingers at, and you could be like, "That's the problem. That's the problem. That's the problem." But this deck, this Madoche, everything is so good and everything does their job so well that you really don't know who to point the finger at. I mean, Who Cake, of course, is the one that summons from the deck. Yes, and Jelly is the new. Uh, bitch in town, and she pretty much just boosted the deck from tier two to tier one, uh, just by just existing. So, uh, like we didn't see that coming when we first saw in Jelly. You, uh, I saw some people mentioning uh, Messenger Lotto. You know, Messenger Lotto. He's one of the key cards that you summon off of Hoot Cake and get the plus by searching uh, your spells and traps. So you can search for your uh, chateau, your ticket, your uh, Palooza. So you know he's viable. Uh, you also got a uh, uh, Magdalene. Magdalene is the searcher. So, you know, you got a ton of cards that, you know, you can point fingers at and be like, you, 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 you. But, you know, when they all come together is where the deck functions the best. And I I think that Who Cake to one wouldn't be the right choice, in my opinion. Because uh, you would still be, you would still have the searchability. The, the thing with Who Cake being at one is that it's being summoned from the deck with Angeli, which would still be at three. That's all you need. You know, on Daily Duels, I play with Mendoches. You know, I opened up with, you know, a uh, Marani Captain and an Angeli, or an Instafusion and an Angeli, or Kitty Cat and an Angeli, or, you know, Spell Striker, if I have a spell in the graveyard, and an Angeli. It doesn't matter, you know, because all I need is that Angeli and opening hand, and I can go off, and you now this is where you can get, you know, what I'm hinting on what I think was going to get hit. Angeli is the problem. Definitely, Angeli is the problem. Because even if Hoot Cake was at 1 and Angeli was at 3, I could still go uh, Kitty Cat and to Angeli. And like I said, you know, mine's not competitive, but like I'm saying, there's other cards that can replace the Kitty Cat in helping the Angeli go off. And, you know, with what you said with Hoot Cake and Hit 1, Angeli would still be at 3. So, like I said, I can run Marauding Captain, I can run Instafusion, I can run the Kitty Cat, I can run Spell Striker, I can run a lot of other cards. So, just being, just getting that one level 3 monster with Angeli will allow me to go off, because I can just go summon Kitty Cat, summon Angeli. Angeli, go ahead and trip it yourself, summon my one Hoot Cake from the deck. Hoot Cake, go ahead and banish the Angeli, summon my Messenger Gelato Search. XC into, um... Uh, whatever, doesn't matter, I guess. I guess you would go for, uh... What, you would go for, what, Leviathan? Or Levier? I mean, uh, not... Le Levier. Le Le Levier. Levier. I get those two mixed up. It's Levier. Uh, you know, so, whatever I search with Messenger Gelato, you know, I can go ahead and get Chateau if I don't have it, and when I, you know, return with the Tiramisu, they can go back to my hand, or I can get Ticket and search... So, I guess you would start off with Chateau or Ticket, it doesn't matter, but uh, go ahead and XC into uh, Levier, Detach, of course, you're detaching, uh, you know, you want to detach the Hoot Cake, bring back your, uh, your uh, Angeli, XC into Tiramisu, Detach, and bounce back, you know, it's as simple as that, so, like I said, I'm putting, all I do is just take the Hoot Cake, put it back in the deck, take the Hoot Cake, put it back in the deck, and 
who cake puts itself back into the deck, you know, when it's, when it's destroyed, period. You know, so either I, when it's destroyed, it's going back to the deck, and I don't have, and I don't have a Chateau, or I'm putting it back to the deck with Tiramisu. So either way, this one who cake is going back to the deck, just so I can bring it right back out with Anjali. So that's not the problem. The thing is, is that we want to lower the deck's consistency by hitting Anjali. The more often that they open up with Anjali, the more often I can go off. And like I said, I am proof of this in uh, Daily Duels when I'm dueling with Lunar. If I open up with that Anjali, I can go off. If we put Anjali down to 1, we can lower the consistency of the deck. Where, sure, you have 3 Who Kicks. Sure, you can open up with as many Who Kicks as you want. The problem with open up with Who Kick is that now since you're running these Angelis and you're focusing around these Angelis, you took out those hand traps. You know, those vi very vital, important hand traps that you had to run because, you know, you'd go like, okay, well, I'll affect Vela your monster. Now I have a monster in the graveyard for Who Kick. Go off, you know? That was what it used to be now before they had Angeli. You would kind of have to revert back to that because, you know, you sure you would have one Angeli, but, you know, you'd still be having all these hoop cakes and, you know, you may open up with hoop cake and you may not have the monster fodder in the graveyard to, to you know, to for hoop cake to eat to go ahead and hoop cake fodder to go ahead and go off with hoop cake. While, you know, with Angeli at one, lowers the consistency, lowers the chance of you opening up with this card. Now, this is the first strike, and what I mean the first strike is that by putting Angeli to 1 and testing and seeing what it does. Now, if putting Angeli to 1 isn't the answer, and they're still going off, and they're still being broken, and they're still the top deck, and nothing can compare to Madoche's, which I doubt would happen if Angeli went down to 1, we can go ahead and point fingers and address it in the next upcoming list. So this is a kind of, you know, tap on the head where we know that Angeli's strong. We, Konami has made their money off of Angeli. You know, said presidents, you can't really say that Konami's not going to hit uh, the deck, that Konami's not going to hit Angeli because it just came out and they're making money off of No, no, no. That's not a valid argument. Set precedence is public judgment. They just released the pack, they made their money, then next list they banned it. Set precedence, uh, six sentence. They just released it, they made their money, they hit it. Alright, so that's not a valid argument, so we can't go with that. So, by hitting Angeli, we lower the deck's consistency of opening Angeli, kind of altering its plays, having to do more where, you know, if you open up with Angeli, then awesome, great for you, you know? And, once again, you're going to be a turn slower, because you got to search with Magdalene. Also, Angeli is not just great by herself. Angeli needs her helpers as well, so if you're going to go ahead and summon Magdalene and search for Angeli, you got to be sure that you have one of those helpers, like I said, Instant Fusion, Kitty Cat, Rotting Captain, etc., etc., to go off with Angeli, because you need that extra three, because you need to exceed with that three when you summon the Hoop Cake to go into either Levier or uh, Invoker to summon for the deck to get that other monster for Tiramisu. So... Angeli, I think, is the crack hit. I think that Angeli is the one that's going to go down to one. And, like I said, if the deck continues to be broken, you know that. Then, the next card that we hit in the deck, which is not Who Cake, like I said, it's not Who Cake. I think the next card after Angeli we hit is actually Magdalene, which would lower the deck's consistency even more, because then you don't have three Magdalene to get so some Magdalene search Angeli. So, now we've lowered the consistency down from just six monsters to down to four. So I think that's a decent hit for Mandoches. Like I said, they're considered the top deck, but not really. So um, I think that's a decent enough hit. All right, next is Omega Chaos. He said, uh, uh, like I said, we're gonna, it's going to be... A lot of you guys commented the same thing, so I'm going to be like, okay, I already talked about this, but... Uh, for the first ones, I'm just going to go off and just talk about it. Alright, so uh, Mega Cast said, all the Dragon Rulers to zero. Um, and I would love this. I would personally love this. But like I said, for this ban list prediction, I'm going to try to get as exact as I possibly can. No bias. No, no, what I think. None of that. Just straight up what I think Konami is going to do. Straight up. So, all the Dragon Rulers to one. Do, I mean, to zero. Do I, I personally, I would love that. I would totally like Dragon Rulers to be dead. Do I think Konami is going to do it? No. I don't think Konami's going to do it, because Konami has this, if it ain't broke, don't fix it mentality. And that's a key example right there. Dragon Rulers have been, you know, popping their heads up, and, you know, the Dragon decks, you know, every once in a while. But it hasn't been enough to shake the format enough to be warned uh, smacking the Dragon Rulers. And Konami can clearly see that. Now, Konami doesn't, Konami put them to one for a reason, so they want to be used, and if they, pop, if they top once every while, they don't mind. But, you know, as long as they're not being what they were in the previous formats, they're fine at one. And, um, you know, 
Konami definitely agrees with that. I mean, I hate Dragon Rollers, and I just don't... I think they're a terrible idea. I agree with you. I mean, uh, Kamui Cast said, uh, time for them to burn in the Forbidden World, LOL. I mean, yeah, I thought he went into a little bit more detail than just that, but... Uh, they were definitely one of the worst mistakes that Konami ever made. But at one, they just been fairly calm, like I said, unless they got some broke-ass support that just completely breaks them, then they're fine at one, and I definitely think that they're one of the underrated decks of the format, uh, so underrated that they're probably going to skid by on the list without getting touched at all, so don't expect anything Dragon Ruler or Heretic Ruler or Mythic Ruler related on the ban list at all, in my opinion. Next, you have Archfiend to one uh, Infernity Archfiend to 1, I need to be more specific. Oh, I actually skipped the hands, I'll get back to them, but Infernity Archfiend to 1. Um, I actually said this on my last list, where I predicted that Archfiend was going to go down to 1, and that would kill the deck. That would definitely kill the deck. You need multiple Archfiends. And I know that Archfiend, Infernities, I keep on saying Archfiends, but Infernities are topping like crazy, they're doing really well. But in my opinion, I think that one of the key reasons why this deck is doing so well is because Soul Charge... And I believe that Konami is going to ban Soul Charge because they made their money off of it. It's done. It's, it's a you know it's a degenerate card. I've, you know I've done my rants about Soul Charge, but I definitely believe that Soul Charge will be banned. And with the banning of Soul Charge, people are going to drop uh, Infernity. So they're just going to be like, all right, well I don't I don't have my card, so let's go ahead and just put it out. I think that by banning Soul Charge. Uh, we can go ahead and see what Infernities do, because we really didn't get an opportunity to really see what Infernities can do without Soul Charge. So, uh, you know, if they continue to just be like one of the top tier decks and just top, 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 top all the time, despite Soul Charge being banned, then we can address it on the next upcoming list. But for right now, I think with the banning of Soul Charge, the Infernities will pretty much, people are going to put the deck down and it won't top as much. There's strength in numbers, and, you know, the more people play the deck, the higher chance it has of topping. You know, just because a deck's not topping, and it may be with numbers, doesn't mean that it's bad. So you got to take that into consideration as well. The, the higher numbers that are being played, the higher chances of it tops, and that's how you get those top tier decks. You know, so like I said, I don't think Infernities are going to get hit. It's just going to be Soul Charge, and that's it. Uh, next, you said Dragon Ravine to three. Okay, so you're saying Dragon Ravine to three because Dragon Rulers are banned, and that was an unhit to Dragon Re Dragon Ease. I agree. I agree that's an unhit, unfair hit to Dragonities, but like I said before, the Dragon Rulers aren't going to get banned. They're not going to get banned at all. They haven't done anything enough. And like I said, Konami is like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. They're not going to. They don't like to rock the boat too much. So, you know, if they saw that banning Dragon Ravine has kind of cooled the dragons, have you know, cooled the temperature of the dragons, and and you know, they lost their heat. They lost a couple stars in the Grand Theft Auto. Then you know, they really, they have no incentive to ta unban this card. You know, they feel like this. If this is the way that that Dragon Rulers have calmed down and quieted down, since this is the way that they put it, then why change it? Why why try to shake the boat? And I definitely think that's what Konami's going to do. They're just going to leave it just the way it is. So, despite Dragonities, you know, you're missing your ravine. Uh, Sorry, it's probably just going to stay banned. And, I, and I'm and i hearing in the grapevine that supposedly Dragoonities are getting some new support and that, uh, you know, that's getting hot. I, nothing is confirmed, you know, unless you give me some Wikipedia link to some new Dragoonity card. I, I'm just going to stand uh, with my opinion that, you know, they're not going to shake the boat. They're just going to keep it the way it is. I've got other things to address and that this isn't important. And uh, the last card that Omega Chaos stated... Uh, uh, Solemn Warning 2-0, most broken generic trap in the game. Uh, time for it to rot in the banlist along with Solemn Judgment. I wouldn't go that far. Uh, you know, of course, I don't like back row. You guys know that. And Solemn Warning is definitely one of the most powerful back row cards. One of the most powerful, the most powerful bank back row card. Just being that counter trap. And, uh, you know, I'm hearing a lot of people saying, Oh, oh, you know, wiretap. <sighs> the evidence of absence is not the absence absence of evidence just because you can run three damn wire traps I can run one warning you may not open up the with the three wire traps I open up a warning and I warning you you know so uh, that's not a valid argument I think that warning is actually a necessary evil where it's at one and if you get hit by it you get hit by it I mean you know there's really not it's not like oh man I gotta worry about three more of these or two more of these coming you know, my way it's at one it's at one. If you opened up with warning and you got it, you know, awesome. Awesome for you. You're lucky. You know, you got to keep in mind that this game is a it's a game of luck. It's a card game. There's luck involved. And, you know, I think it's a necessary evil by being able to hit particular things, you know, with um, 
people running around, you know, trap stunning, uh, and, you know, people running around. I think that it's just a necessary evil, you know? If Solomon Morning got banned, then, you know, trap stun would be the hot shit, and, uh, you know, Lance would go back in popularity, definitely, because there would be, you know, there would be no counter trap that can just stop me in my tracks, you know? Now, you're probably saying, like, well, Blackhorn, but, you know, Blackhorn doesn't hit everything, it only hits inherent summons, so, you know, so, Bujins, you know, why do they care? You know, they sit on a Yamato, let me see you try to Blackhorn that, you know, well, if I go summon Yamato, you can warning that. So, I think it's just a necessary evil. Uh, I don't like back row as much as, you know, most people, but I'd say it's a necessary evil. Warning, you can stay in one. You haven't been shaking the boat too much. Uh, the one that I am actually want to point my finger at this time, not warning, but actually I want to turn my finger to Blackhorn, and I will go into more detail about that if uh, any of you guys commented Blackhorn or uh, on my ban list prediction, so you can look forward to that. But uh, I'm actually going to have to probably call this apart because I'm already up to 20 minutes and I've only got done with one person so like I said I don't know how many parts this will be um, it won't be interrupting any uh, tag videos or anything like that so uh, whenever it's a single video you'll get it and I will pretty much go until I am done with all your comments so I apologize that I spent this entire video just on Omega Chaos's comments, but I will get to all yours, and no matter how many parts it will be, I will be sure to comment. Like I said, some of you guys had repeat cards, so I will be like, okay, re I will refer back to that, so I don't have to waste my time with a whole bunch of just restating what I restated, but definitely I'm going to get done with all of these and all of your comments, so if you got anything new, uh, go ahead and, uh, you know, we can continue this, so if you haven't commented already anything, be sure to go ahead and comment. Like I said, we can keep this going. Uh, I like to bounce around ideas, and you guys are helping me form my own balance prediction. I want to get into the head of Konami. Uh, there's a lot of cards where I think they should be hit, but I doubt they are. Um, and, you know, for example, I'm just going to go ahead and get this out of the way. So if you guys don't want to comment these, uh, you can already get my opinion on it, but yet I don't believe they're going to hit. For example, Skill Drain, uh, Drag Down, um, just Dragon Rulers. Uh, ch 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 I'm, miss I'm missing a card. I'm missing a card. I'm missing a card. Oh, my God. I'm missing a card. Uh, Bisphere. Where, yeah, I think they should be hit. Are they going to get hit? I doubt it. So, uh, don't expect them to see those cards on my ban list prediction. So, yeah. So, I hope you guys enjoyed part one of the final uh, July 2014 ban list talk. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for all the support. And I will see you guys in part two tomorrow. Thanks for watching.